Hey everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchmen. We are back again. This is issue nine. You know, time is this elastic rubber band as Manhattan teaches us and really the series should have concluded by now it should have concluded at the end of 2018 we are now closer to the middle of 2019 than the beginning of it but you know here we are um, if you're familiar with the show we've been going through well we started off with the incredible work of uh, you know Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons and uh, you know J.H. as well J. Higgs which was um, amazing to have the colorist of the Watchmen books on the show and we're in murkier waters now we're going through the, I mean, it is kind of official canon sequel, unfortunately. We are talking about Doomsday Clock. We are pushing through. We are 75% of the way-ish there. Um, we're not really enjoying ourselves. There's been, you know, little highs here and there, little moments that we've enjoyed and certain things that we've disagreed and certain things we've hated, certain things we've loved, whatever. But we've just got to get it done now really and today we are tackling issue nine which is called crisis it is not just myself it is deaf here deaf how's it going how's it going tom i've got a question for you mm. who watches the watchman who reads the watch who anymore, reads the- tom <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah it's um i told you this one would be be better see listeners uh tom forgot we recorded about 20 minutes of the episode but tom he bloody forgot a press record so we're going through it again we're like dr manhattan reliving the amazing <laughs> exactly. moments of it's, this podcast exactly i mean I'm, I'm glad we did it now and not like you know i we discussed on the show before i do about our, about our podcast and when i had jo- you'll know who jolly j is and like i realized half an hour in i hadn't recorded anything and i just didn't really yeah. tell him and i just recorded my own intro and edited in and uh, people didn't really seem to notice but um but yeah you know we, we did a little bit but as we say the, these chronological streams cross over and um def what do you remember of doomsday clock like to me if you actually had to sit me down, I had to put on an A4 sheet of paper, what's been going on in this story, the big hitters, the movers and shakers, I'd find it quite difficult. Yeah, my brain's sort of done a, a reset almost um, because I feel like the story's two parts. I, I can sort of remember this stuff in Russia that happened with um, Firestorm, Firestorm setting yeah. a bomb off, but everything before that is sort of a blur. Um, and I think think it, it's purely because of just how much stuff that there's going on like i've been reading through civil war by marvel um which is about 110 issues long and i do often catch myself sort of reading it issue to issue and thinking like oh crap this i must have zoned out in yeah, one yeah. of the issues because i've just completely lost what's happening and i think it's just because there's so much going on um to me the best graphic novels they are very simplistic stories where the the story sort of pushes the drama rather than the drama pushing the story like if you think of the the greatest graphic novels of all time like from hell which is about jack the ripper sort of going through london murdering prostitutes um and then getting investigated very simple story on the surface and the book kind of deals with the complexities and the psychology behind that the dark knight returns again it's about batman sort of returning to fight crime in gotham and on the way he fights two-face uh, the mutant leader the joker and then superman and it's sort of this escalation up through low level crime all the way up to superman who's you know stands as the government himself very simple story very easy to follow Whereas this, it's just all over the place. And because of that, it's really difficult to kind of remember all the 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 spinning plates and exactly what's going on where. I mean, how many characters are there in this? There's just so many. Yeah. Uh, and they don't really seem to have the, the pacing down at all. You know, they're not releasing it at, at regular intervals. So it's becoming very frustrating to kind of retread through your memory and remember exactly what's going on you know we're not dr manhattan tom we can't see all of this laid out in front of us as a trade it might work better but i kind of feel like the hype's not there at the moment um and it's just yeah it just feels like another story that dc's doing and i feel like they've dropped the ball quite a lot on this and you know 
Dr. Manhattan's one of the main focal points in this issue, but where the fuck are the rest of the Watchmen? You know, the, the, where's Marionette? Where's where's Reggie? Where's fucking yeah. the Mothman? Yeah. Where's Nathan Dusk? Like, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad he's not here, them. but still, like, you know. I honestly forgot about the mime and marionette. Yeah. Just the, what they should have done is pick a character who was going to be our journey through this world and stuck with them. Tom, like, who is the main character of this book? Yeah. I, I, like, honestly, yeah. who is it? Yeah. And that is a massive falling down narratively. Not many things work when they don't have a main character. One of the biggest criticisms of Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, is... You don't know who the main character is. Juxtaposing that, Luke Skywalker is the main character of the original Star Wars trilogy. I've got no idea who the main character of the the prequel trilogy is. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, books really fall down. And storytelling in general, it really... If you don't have a main character, it it's very hard to continue a narrative. And I know I'm sounding off here like I'm some amazing writer, but it's it's a very simple thing. Sure. Just have a pick a pick a character and follow their journey. They could have picked Rorschach, uh, Ozzy Mandias. They could have picked anyone from the DC universe, but uh, I don't know who it is. And because of that, it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's a story interweaved through the book. It's just an event after event. No. From a different character's perspective. Yeah, yeah, there's no sort of pro- protagonist progression. I mean, one anomaly, you're completely right, one anomaly that my friend pointed out to me recently that does work without a main character, a Jurassic Park. See, even then, though, I would say Sam Neill. I guess was... so, Alan, yeah. Or, or, or I guess even, you know, you could argue and uh, t- the T-Rex. Another thing, yeah. How many characters are there in Jurassic Park? It's about six, Tom. This, about 70 of them. Um, I reckon this is why the issue took so long to come out because we know Gary Frank's a bit of a, a perfectionist, a precisionist, and the amount of heroes that he has to draw in certain sections must have taken years. Yeah, it's horrendous. I feel very sorry for the guy. It's what a fuck on. Even the original Watchmen, Tom, how many characters are in that? Oh my God. You can count them on one hand. Um, and whilst, yeah, there's not really a main character in the Watchmen. They all get their moment in the spotlight. Uh, they all get single focused issues, and you can sort of. It works better because it's building towards a team piece, like say a Avengers movie or a Justice League movie. You know, you've you've had maybe not Justice League because they're, they're shit, but you know they they've built up through the years. They've done single standalone stories, so you can get used to the characters, and then they sort of put them all together in one. Whereas this is just putting them all together in one, and it's shit. Let's talk about the cover. Let's not spoil we're writing yet, though, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, um, you know, Doc Manhattan in his Thanos, Thanos garb, right? I mean, you know, yeah. the, the, the snapping, all these characters evaporating in their costumes. It's pretty effective. Yeah, but you brought it up there. It's You think of Thanos before you think of Dr. Manhattan. Now, Dr. Manhattan, he's been in pop culture since 1985. And, you know, the the graphic novel that he's in, it's a, it's regarded as the best graphic novel of all time by many, many people. And it just goes to show how much DC have really dropped the ball with the branding here and the hype train. When you look at that, and my mind instantly just goes, oh, yeah, it's a bit like Thanos that, you know what I mean, Tom, mm-hmm. the... They've just been completely overshadowed here. Rebirth was meant to be a massive, massive event in the DC universe that everyone was getting behind, like, oh, my God, they're bringing Watchmen into the DC universe. And I feel like that hype has just completely died down. I I don't see it anywhere. You know, it it might change when the, the trade paperback comes out, but it just doesn't feel like there was hype there. Even before Watchmen had a lot more hype behind it upon its release than I feel like this does. I mean, this is building up towards Dr. Manhattan versus Superman. And where is the hype for that? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the ultimate tagline. The, yeah. We are slowly, slowly crawling towards. And 
you know, again, there are so many references back to Watchmen. We open on the first page with a nine-panel grid with Manhattan on the red planet, you know, harking back to him living through multiple timelines and experiencing it all at once, that singularity, looking back to, I think it's Watchmaker, the fourth issue, um, Manhattan's origin issue, which we both gushed wildly and wildly about. And... Um, you know, it's not a terrible sequence. I think the art's great. I like the swap between the backdrop of the stars at his head and his hand with the ring and, and the, the crumbling earth beneath. But, um, you know, we, we're getting into Manhattan's mind. We're getting this monologue. And we're not getting much else from it, really. Does Superman destroy me or do I destroy everything? Again, I'm not... That isn't John Osterman's voice in my head. Yeah. He talk like that. And you know why it is, Tom, and I noted this down, it's because he asks himself a question. Mm. If you read Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan doesn't ask himself himself a quest like questions because he's so certain about everything. Everything has a certainty to him. So him saying that, does he let Superman destroy him or does he destroy everything? He, he he's meant to be a puppet and he knows that he is. He's he's so it's just strange that he's given himself this question and this choice because he should know the answer. And that's why it seemed so different to me, to to the roots of the character. This is a guy who always has the answer. Um, and it's just, yeah, not very good, not very accurate to me. And we, we've pointed out many times that the titles of Doomsday Clock have been quite clumsy, but especially in the DCU, the title crisis is such a loaded term, right? Yeah, it, it, massive, massive term uh, in the DC universe. It often refers to like mega events such as Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, Infinity Crisis and Final Crisis. Yeah. And this, it doesn't really feel deserving of it, to be honest. It no. doesn't. I don't see what the crisis is here. I know that there was a bomb in Russia and Firestorm's getting blamed, and the heroes are rushing across the galaxy to track down this energy signature that set off the bomb, but, like, it doesn't really feel like... They're just investigating. It doesn't feel like the crisis is there yet. They, they're going to find out what it is, and then when they got there, that's when the crisis would start. Yeah, and the quote that it's deriving from from Seneca, the hugely influential uh, Greek dramatist and philosopher. Seneca, probably most famous where Shakespeare stole the five-act structure from. Um, but even the quote that it comes from, which we'll get to at the end of the issue, is a really, like, pragmatic, basic quote. Like, when I read that quote, I was like, duh. I think it's, like, something like every... Hu it, 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 every human presents an opportunity for crisis or something it's like well yeah of course they do yeah. like I, I don't i don't know what's profound about that or deep about that but that's kind of jeff johns in a nutshell i will say that these opening pages these tableaus of characters most of whom i've got you know i don't really know i think these are really fucking cool i do actually i don't actually like these pages yeah so you've got hawk girl hawk man yep. barter mr miracle uh, the Green Lanterns, Green Lantern Corps, Arrow, Flash, yeah, Cyborg, Aquaman. Martian Manhunter, my man. It's like, uh, I, I, wish, I wish there was like an Alan Moore ship. They kind of hint towards it with Constantine and Swamp Thing, but mm -hmm. it would have been nice if they threw a few more. I know he didn't really do much for DC; it was more an image and stuff like that. Um, but 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 yeah, as as just a kind of Easter egg hunt, uh, I do like these these sequences. Yeah, I like them, but you know what? I'm conscious of ta Tom. Time is running out yeah. for this graphic novel, and they use three pages to mm -hmm. just show people traveling across space. What those pages dialogue. as well? There's, yeah. no, there's no exposition. It just seems like a big waste. Yeah. Anyway, we discover they're going to Mars to trace the energy signature from the Firestorm explosion. Remember that, Tom? Remember the Firestorm explosion? Oh, man, when he the turned people to glass and all that bullshit. Moment of my life. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a Bring lot... back the vagina alien. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, just, yeah. there's a lot of looking back, really, and the tachyons come in, which are the ultimate plot device, which I think more was kind of 
you know, more kind of was gleeful in the paradox of that. And, you know, a lot of Watchmen's tropes are kind of aping these ideas. Whereas I think for John's here, it's just a sort of necessity. Uh, it's something that allows yeah. him to tell his story. Um, you know, we see that Bruce is still breathing. I mean, Batman's completely indestructible, isn't he? I think he was in, you know, you know, he's a human. He was in the eye of a bomb blast, but he's just he's slightly grizzled. Yeah, they can't kill him, Tom. No. He's the biggest. So, and the thing is that these tachyons remind me of when you have like a Superman level character, there always is some convoluted way to depower them. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know if you've seen Captain Marvel yet, Tom. I have But they've got a little neck thing that they put on her that depowers her. Yeah, so, you know, it's not a complete washout. And when that gets deactivated, then she just goes wild and nothing can really stand against her. Right. It's the same as in Thor Ragnarok. They use a little neck thingy there. And the tachyons to me are just like the the little plot device that they need to depower Dr. Manhattan from just completely wiping everyone out. And yeah, it's not, not that good. Tom. No, no. Yeah, it's a bit. It was, yeah. It's already been in Watchmen already. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, don't do it again. Yeah, exactly. And there's just a lot of, lot of stu- you know, sort of heavy lifting here for the storytelling. The meta humans idea is coming in, and the anti Superman sentiment. And you know, the art's fantastic. I, I think, I think you know, Frank's is a great artist. Absolutely no doubt. He's clearly like a bit of an artisan. You know, he really takes his time for these things. I like the look of Lois here as well. She's a bit modernized. But, um, I mean, did you feel the same way? Like, a lot of this, I was just mentally trying to play catch-up. I was like, I was like, like, we've spoken about this book for probably, like, eight hours. Like, a whole working day, we've spoken about Doomsday Club. Mm -hmm. But very little has stuck in my memory. Whereas other things that I've read once, like, you know, I'm currently reading, uh, I went to London the other week to a great comic book store called Gosh Comics. And they had an Alan Moore section. And one of the only things that Alan Moore has done that's not been released on paperback is 1963, which is kind of his parody of Marvel Silver Age comics. Like he does yeah. like um, the Fantastic Four and then he does he does he does his take on four, but it's Egyptian gods rather than Norse gods. And it's really fucking yeah. cool. And obviously it's more because it's brilliant. But yeah, so much of this is just sort of sieved through my mental brain. Like. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And again, I think it goes back to the how convoluted it is mm-hmm. um, and how difficult that information actually is to retain. Uh, it's very rare. It's really, honestly, it's, I wish he just stuck with one main character because it's difficult to kind of keep up with exactly what's going on. I know I've been sucking dick, Marvel's dick. Yep. I've been sucking dick and I've been sucking Marvel's <laughs> dick. But I know this uh, episode especially i've been sucking marvel's dick but infinity war there's you could say well infinity war's got 64 different characters in yeah but it follows thanos as he interacts with those characters and you know what i mean there's still Mm -hmm. a a main character in that that you follow through whereas this it's just so convoluted there's so much information to retain i don't even think the graphic novel knows where it's going and it it doesn't really feel like it has a MacGuffin, which these kind of stories I feel is essential. You need sort of that thing where it's like it did start out originally. It was like we need to find Doctor Manhattan. We've got to go back and yeah, find Doctor yeah. Manhattan. And then when they found him, it, I don't know what the hell's happened from then on. There's there's not been that driving plot point that's kind of pulling everyone together. There's not an Infinity Gauntlet in here, Tom. There's not Infinity Stones that someone's trying to collect. There's not a Tesseract that someone in the Avengers is trying to get, you know what I mean? Or Mother Boxes, they're they're always a massive plot point in DC crossover books, and there's nothing like that in this. There's no MacGuffin, and because of that, it's really difficult to follow the the plot threads because they're not sort of driving towards this thing. Yeah, and introduced here, I mean, again, we get the metahuman stuff, we get presidential tweets, uh, we learn mm. that Wonder Woman is uh, going to go to the UN to address this you know, mass exodus of heroes. Yeah. It seems like every fucking issue is Bruce Wayne recuperating and Albert... Alfred bringing him something, and you know, um, he. <laughs> I just love that he wakes up and asks where Firestorm is. Like, it's yeah. just so lame. Like, I don't give a fuck about this guy. Like, <laughs> you know. What and I mean? you know, you know what I find funny, Tom. There's a bit that says you can't wait to address this any longer, Mister President. 
And that's hilarious to me because, as you know, Jeff Johns, he sort of used to be the president of DC. Right, right. And he's taken absolutely fucking ages to address this story, Tom. Mm -hmm. So he needs to take a leaf out of his own book. Is that that a uh, little Easter egg? If you look under the TV, it says um, $899.99. Is that like 89 when Watchmen came out? Is that maybe a... I thought it was 85, Tom. Oh, wow. That's embarrassing. I got that wrong. Yeah, I think it was 85, yeah. Um, yeah. So let's just uh, let's not dwell on that. Let's move forward. And uh, yeah, we have uh, Bruce in the manor. Bruce healing up. Bruce asking about Firestorm. More Firestorm stuff. Who? He's like two guys in one, right? I can't. Again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very jarring. Uh, even for me, who knows a lot about the character, this is the first time we've actually seen them separated. Yes. In the graphic novel. Um, so it took me like a couple of, pa- well, not a couple of pages, but you know, it took a while yeah. to kind of read that, click on, go, oh shit, that's Firestorm, of course. But d- just badly introduced, really, really badly. Um, I would challenge anyone the first time they're reading this to get to that panel where they're talking and go, oh right, that's Firestorm straight away. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's not, not yeah. well done. Yeah, yeah, no, completely agree. It's quite a nice reveal when the roof pulls back and they're in space and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, it's quite typical, really. We get lots of our information, as Johns likes to do, from television. Um, you know, we learn through Green Arrow as well about the divisions that are occurring and um, just just, just lot, lot, lots of talking, lots of kind of uninteresting action uh, being played out. We see Rorschach's uh, mask, Reggie's mask against the journal as well. Oh, yeah, remember when he locked him in the asylum and all that shit? Yeah, just oh, wow. so long ago. Yeah, yeah. Probably like a year and a half ago, you know. Genuinely. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. did this come out? When did it start? I think it came when, out like October 2017. End, like, I think that was round about when it came out. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, I mean... I've yeah I've moved house in that time I remember just doing the episode in my old house like yeah. so it's fucking it's fucking crazy how it's moved forward um you know, Bruce uh, pondering Mars heading off to Mars and that sort of stuff we get quite a lot of Green Lantern core stuff as well early on them descending on the planet yeah which again they're just bringing these characters in Tom um I do like the Green Lantern core but are they the right? Is this the right time to bring them in, into the story? Yeah. You know, I mean, a, my, a big problem that I have with this issue and the arc in general is that it kind of pressed the reset button in issue eight and kind of started again. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this should be issue two. When I was reading it, I was like, right, this feels like it's setting up some stuff, and this should be like an interesting issue two. But no, it's issue nine, Tom, and I don't know what the hell they're going with it. No, no. Um, you know, we have the checkerboard, which have we seen that before? Am I imagining that? Wasn't that like in some yeah, sort of memory that or dreams? Was or I think when they met Doctor Manhattan, it was on a giant yeah, checkerboard, was it? Yeah, and then yeah. He transported away, and he must have took that with them. Yeah, uh, and then we get the the photo of John Osterman and Janie, which again go back to our Watchmen episodes where we love the source material and we wax lyrical. I remember us talking about the photo for quite a while and I think I was like dwelling on like oh the, the balloon flying off and the frayed edges and all that sort of stuff but there's yeah. no real nuance or nouse here. It's some wise cracking Green Lanterns and lots of heroes and 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 voices chatting and and them kind of descending on and it is quite cool to see the manhattan structure uh, at the bottom of page 13 there like you know i'm not going to say it doesn't excite me seeing these things in the comic but then i suddenly realize where i am and get a bit disillusioned yeah and, and you know what another thing that i've just realized is tom they've got lots of heroes but they don't have a villain in yeah. this graphic novel there's not a villain like you don't even have like the the mask killer that you had from Watchmen. Mm-hmm. There's not like oh, it just feels so unbalanced, and there's not a there's not a main hero. There's not villain. It's just some shit that's happening. So f- who cares? <laughs> who does care? Who anyway, does care? Yeah. it's clear that Superman's being denounced as an American hero in the graphic novel, which I kind of get they're building towards this. Met the world hates meta humans thing because the Justice League going hiding. Um, but Superman was never like a massive American hero anyway. Like, the, well, the last couple of decades he hasn't been. He was before that, obviously. Yeah. Um, but 
a big story in the comics once was that he decided to become an ambassador for the world and not just America. Mm. And since then, to me at least, he's always been kind of this hero of the world, whereas now it's like he's America and he stands for all that. Whereas, I don't know, it's a bit of an outdated ideology for me, but I guess people coming into the comics now might be like, yeah, he stands for America. I yeah. can't believe America hates Superman. That'll be what people are saying as they walk down the streets of New York and then someone else will shoulder button and go, hey, I'm walking here. That's what I imagine New York would be like, Tom. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's a spot-on depiction, really. And if, and, um... you. if you're from New York, write in. And let us know. Yo, if we got some New York listeners out there, I'm sure possibly we do. And I'd like to think that they are as disappointed as we are with this wow. um, debacle. Um, the They're thing? not, Tom. I've been reading the reviews. Yo, the reviews are clearly bought. They they, wow. they, they cannot be true. They cannot be true. I just think they're shills. I, IGN I think shills. I think, I think IGN are definitely shills, to I, be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's that, it, it's the whole the whole Gamergate thing, isn't it? It's like they've kind of got to be in the pockets of them to be given the yeah. demos and whatever, and it's kind of a hard truth. And, yeah, it's just... it. I just... You, you read that sort of stuff, and it's just it just baffles the mind, really. But, but then, you know, that happens a lot. Like, um, Roma winning Best Foreign Film over Shoplifters was just mm-hmm. ridiculous in my eyes as well. But, you know, that, 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 that's for a different day. So, yeah, the lanterns are here. They're defending the planet by covering it in, like, a green shield, I think. And, like, Firestorm yeah. is haunted by the professor and it's like i was like where what's going on like yeah. what is happening and that's another problem with this it's not accessible either so you better tell you what tom you better have 20 batman posters on your wall and have mm-hmm. 700 dc graphic novels to understand all this because <sighs> it's all over the place you, you there's so much back reading that you have to do to understand this graphic novel that, you know, some people might love it. It might be a hardcore DC fan's wet dream, but I'm pretty much a hardcore DC fan. I tell you what, Tom, not an enjoyable story for me. It's not. So, fuck it. It's not. It has it has very little momentum and, and, and pace, honestly. It just felt like we're just thrown into all these different yeah. characters. You like, know what it is? I think it's, be- right, newcomers not going to understand what's going on, and a hardcore DC fan like myself... Uh, we were getting disappointed because we're expecting more and we kind of we've seen it all done before but better mm. so it's disappointing two groups of people tom it is it is i don't i really don't know who it's who it's pleasing to be honest with you it is just uh you know an absolute letdown IGN. yeah yeah it, it's pleasing fucking yeah fandom and eight it cool news and you know whatever those are but 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 yeah no it's not 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 pleasing us and um you know the descent of the heroes onto manhattan's palace is pretty cool i suppose um the interactions aren't really they're a little bit of a letdown like i don't really know who this guy is in the green lantern calls as like a bit of a sort of new jersey tough guy um he kind of leads the way for a lot of this we have harks back to when they're out there on karnak and dr manhattan is talking through time and um they're protesting a power they fear he says and then he reveals he's talking to someone else uh six minutes in the future um we get into well, before we get into the fisticuffs, like, it's quite cool when the, the sort of lanterns are like, you know, we've battled these people before. Let us show you these people we've battled before. And I don't mm. really know the point of this. Like, again, it feels a little bit treading yeah. water like the earlier sequences. Just cool stuff to draw, isn't it, really? Yeah. And stuff that fans will go, wow. Like, oh, just this... Doomsday's there and um, yeah. Mark Strong. Yeah. Um, yeah, loads of... Sinestro, he's Sinestro, there too. That's it, yeah. Remember Sinestro, Tom? They're just great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, completely shit. So, I just, just this entire thing, like, I don't want to keep harkening back to Civil War because yeah. I've said it a thousand times. But this, it just feels to me like Civil War, but not as developed. Yeah. Like, from reading that, I can see that the entire run of that completely outweighs this. And obviously, they've got 110 issues, but. I didn't actually like the main arc of Civil War that much in my first read, but once you read it with all the side stories, I I think it's a masterpiece, and this just feels so dull in comparison. It doesn't even feel like a Watchmen story. 
it's just so far removed and whilst in Watchmen, you know, superheroes were denounced under the Keen Act, Act yeah. I believe, yeah. Mm-hmm. It just feels like here, this whole metahuman act, it's not as interesting. And that's because the main plot point, that's because it's becoming the main plot point. Whereas in the Watchmen, it was sort of a backdrop to the plot, not the big driving force. And I can see what Johns is trying to do. Like in Watchmen, Ozyman dies, steps in to stop the world from destroying itself in a war between Russia and America. And we do get that tension here. But it just doesn't feel as well developed because it's being introduced in issue nine instead of issue one where it should be. Um, yeah, and it's just it's crap. It's mm-hmm. it's t- trying to jam it all in at the end and hoping that everything sort of falls in place. Yeah, whereas yeah. it's not. It's not good. It is mad, isn't it? It's like the first proper confrontation with... Okay, he's not the villain, but but he's kind of the antagonist, Dr. Manhattan, to a certain extent. Is yeah. with characters we have no clue. Like, characters yeah. we've spent no time with. And Doomsday Clock is a book, for all its flaws, that does take time with its characters and lets you know yeah. their motivations to some extent and gives you flashbacks. And, you know, remember the marionette flashback as well with Mime yeah. and... You know, and what we said was so true, by the way. The cops that investigated them should have been the cops that investigated uh, Comedian's murder. Like, mm-hmm. th- why did, like, please revise that and do that. Like, they definitely should have done that. So, yeah, this guy, this slugger, this fucking asshole, this ginger, punches Dr. Manhattan in the face, thinks that he's killed him. Obviously, he's not dead. He comes back. It's quite cool that Manhattan takes the ring and isn't certain what it's going to be, and that leads to some mystery for him. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mind that part. I thought that was a nice kind of interaction of the worlds. Yeah. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. That's Guy Gardner, by the way, not Ginger Asshole. Man. Right, right. Okay. Is he like yeah. a, he's a big deal, right? Yeah, it's sort of like in the 90s he was. Okay. It was when sort of DC were... Sort of changing up all the characters a bit, uh, and Guy Gardner. I think it was the nineties that he became the new Green Lantern, the new kid on the block. I remember reading like comic books from back then, uh, Eclipso. I remember reading that, and there was like a. <laughs> I actually think I remember the slogan now, Tom. Uh, he's standing there with his ring, and it goes, "There's a new guy in town." Course. I think that was the slogan, Guy Gardner comics. And obviously you read that, you go, I tell you what, I, I want to fucking pick this up. Uh, but, you know, he comes in with his blue man group joke, I mean, which is funny, uh, except for it's been done 900 times yeah. before. Uh, and there's a bit of dick there as well, Tom. There is, there is. He wants a bit to put, of blue dick. He wants uh, to put underwear on. Remember when I said I had blue dick before, yeah. Tom? Yeah. <laughs> um, so Manhattan has the Better ring. Stop with all these gay jokes, nice. actually, Tom. You know, yeah. Everyone's welcome to this podcast. It's inclusive. <laughs> I've seen Captain Marvel twice, so there's your bigot. I, can't I didn't remember. even like it. I think it was in the original Watchmen run. We said something really offensive. I can't even remember. I think we had to edit it out. It was something like no, really did, like Tom. probably didn't actually. I'll have to go back and listen. You you didn't like Captain Marvel, did you say? We're going to get cancelled. Well, yeah, I, don't, I thought it was all right. The yeah. wife loved it though. Yeah, uh, you know, do you ever go to the cinema with like your girlfriend and you sit there and you're watching it and you think, oh my god, she hates this, mm-hmm. and we've got two hours and I now can't enjoy it because I'm sitting here stressing out that she doesn't like it. I had that the entire time, thinking, fucking hell, this is so bad. And she turned to me at the end and she was like, "E, that's one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen." Wow. So I don't think we're watching the same thing, but. Fair enough. You know, I'm not going to take it away from you. You're a female. It's a female superhero. It's for you. Enjoy it. It's it was be- fine, Tom. It was fine. I say it was really bad. It was fine. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to... I just know how functional these films can be. So, yeah, yeah it's not really something that, uh, that appeals to me. I did see Spider-Verse recently, though. That is fucking fire. Like, that really, is so really good. good. Movie, yeah. Holy shit. It's strange that Sony managed to make that and Venom in the same year. Yeah. I don't understand what goes on there, Tom. I think they'd probably sit down for like three days of work a week and like the other two days they just fuck about. And they probably wrote Spider-Verse in those three days and Venom in the other two. 
well, it's that guy, isn't it? I think it's Phil Miller or Chris Lord. It was one of them two who was writing it, and they're you know they're they're, they're fucking geniuses. They are the anti Jeff yeah. Johns. And and speaking of female superheroes, we get this um, magician woman. <laughs> <The> <laughs> <laughs> we we get this uh, magician woman who has pros- possibly one of my highlights of Doomsday Clock as a whole. Satana. What does she say here? Azirf! That's so, what she says. She casts a spell. She um, casts spells by saying things backwards. Oh, so, I see. Spree- oh, okay, yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, and you can have a lot of fun with that, Tom, yeah. uh, in writing only because there was an animated DC movie Um where she was one of the characters, and I think she just said the spell right, forward. Right. But when when it's in writing, they they write it backwards, uh, and it look it's really fun. It's it's a fun it's a fun thing to read, Tom, because you know you you read it and you try and figure out what you're saying. Uh, but yeah, it's not. I love I love her. I love a bit of Zatanna, but she does. I don't think they're bringing her to the big screen. Warner Brothers are, but I don't know how they're going to do the the backwards spell thing. So Manhattan has came in peace, and you know they. they... I just realised, Tom. I made a note of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, those people that pop up, that uh, Guy Gardner shows from the ring, like Doomsday. Uh, sorry, Dark Side. Yeah. Oh yeah, Doomsday is the uh, Anti Monitor. They're all villains from other crises. Scissors. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. So that's why he's shown them. So other DC crises, scissors. They're the villains. Okay, that's yeah, that's exactly. nice. That's nice, yeah. and um, I mean the art here is still really fucking good, actually. And I think um, I especially like the explosions. I think uh, Frank does does that very very well. Of course, the heroes stand no chance against Manhattan. And then just as the plot's getting good, we get some turgid scenes between mm-hmm. Lex and Lois. Um, you know, making deals oh, at the eleventh hour as they always yeah. are. Like it just reminded me of that incredible All Star Superman story where. Um, uh, where Clark goes to interview Lex during a prison break. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, just you know, we've we've said before how much we idolise those comics, and and they are astonishingly good. But yeah, this sequence again, kind of enigmatic, not really clear what's going on here. Um, you know, it's cliche, very cliche, very cliche. It's um, the old give someone a weapon you know, so they can kill you, but they actually trust you. Yeah, and then. They've seen this panel memed everywhere on Instagram, uh, and Lex brings up Wally West, who was removed from the DC Universe in the New 52, mm-hmm. and then he was the one who returned to Kickstart Rebirth. Uh, it's a big thing apparently online, but I, honestly, read now, I didn't really give a shit. To okay. Be honest with you. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Did you give a shit? No, I don't really. It's not really clear. Like, um, I'm yeah. No, I'm, the only thing that I know about the Flash is that there's that clip of the TV show that has that giant shark guy in it that looks fucking yeah. awful. Um, I couldn't well, believe it was on like network TV. I thought the shark was really good, Tom. Wow. I don't think I've seen King Shark for a while, but I remember at the time being like, "Whoa, I can't believe this is on TV." <laughs> Damn. I had the same reaction is you but a different tone of voice <laughs> uh and then yeah the fighting goes down we're learning about um you know wonder woman going to the un oh, and more firestorm stuff as well and dr Man- <laughs> i mean Do- you know like we've had on mars before with with laurie where Dr. Manhattan was showing her her past and how fractured it was and comedians, your father, and all this sort of stuff. Well, he, here we have this, but to such a smaller degree. Like, yeah. Terrible. Uh, yeah. That you, that Wonder Woman UN ambassador, by the way, that thing, uh, in real life, Wonder Woman was the UN ambassador for women's rights, mm-hmm. I think. I think it would. Anyway, when the movie came out, they made her like a UN ambassador for women's rights. So I think that's just a little oh, nod yeah, to that. Right, that's right. Yeah, they did. Yeah, which was a stupid idea. Yeah, I mean, it might be sexist. I don't get. I didn't get what the point was. Surely, make Gal Gadot an ambassador. Don't make fictional character yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah, she's a fucking idiot. Um, but yeah, she gets attacked by Giganta and Black Adam. That's and it's right. A shock. And, but uh, I do think the Doctor Manhattan fight's quite interesting when he pieces himself back together. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah, see yeah. the nervous system, but mm. and that's kind of 
it, right? I mean, you know, we push forward, and and like, yeah, like you say, she's in the UN, and um, they all come through, and it's still cool to see uh, Manhattan in his exoskeleton kind of form. There, I think that that's so bad. Like, if there was like. Because um, they have that DC fighting game, don't they? Like yeah. that would be a cool alternate costume for the Doctor Manhattan character. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But, oh, I'm surprised they haven't put them in the game or yeah. anything. Actually, get him in. Yeah, sure. Uh, but we also see that Ozymandias is kind of pulling the strings a bit here, yeah. unless this is a twist when he presses the enter key, mm-hmm. and it's meant to be like a red herring showing that. Ozymandias is behind the whole thing, but maybe he's not. I don't know. I no, don't care. No. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the crucial thing. Yeah, I've got no interest in that. We get to the quote by Seneca, which again, I think, meh, I think that's a, such a lame quote, and, and John's just has a tin ear for quotation. I really don't like where he goes with that, whereas yeah. Moore just worked on multiple Manhattan-like levels with his ideas, with his quotes here. The characters are smoking. I know you don't really look into the back matter. Um, I mean, this is actually the leanest section yet. Um, it's basically a single case file. Uh, Dr. Martin Stein's plans and motivations for what would become the Firestorm Project. I mean, you know, it lends some credence and veracity to the claims that some meta beings were being created, blah, blah, blah. But again, the whole meta human, meta being idea is just a bit of a lame duck narratively for me. Yeah, it's, I don't care. It's not really getting that mentioned. It doesn't seem that important in the story. So why should I care? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not really, yeah, it's not a big plot point for me. So don't care, Tom. Don't <laughs> care. Come get it over with. I've got people, I've got too many subscribers now to be yeah, exactly, messing yeah. around with this <laughs> <laughs> and you're it doesn't even it's not everyone. even get views it's not like we yeah. do it and all oh, people love it it's like no it's kind of no one really yeah. cares so let's have a look on the website messing up my analytics <laughs> yeah <laughs> doomsday okay number of, uh, oh no it's nathaniel dusk on the cover number 10 is um out on april april 24th so well that's just, a lie because it'll definitely yeah, be yeah, yeah no you're right it will it will but um i mean you know potentially that's when we'll be back but you know, we, we, dear listeners, me and Dave yeah. despise this series quite clearly, and I think we've pointed out quite succinctly what its flaws are. And this wasn't even fun just to read as just a bit of fucking comic book to read. You know what I mean? Yeah, it it's just not even bad, tardy, really, like, is it? It's not no. terrible enough. It's not like a holy terror by Frank Miller, which is definitely read that if you want an absolutely shit graphic novel. That's really hilarious to read yeah um but yeah should we read out some other people's reviews tom yeah yeah and then read some comics i hope you don't have anywhere to go let's go because i've cancelled all my plans for tonight uh it looks like uh, ign haven't actually reviewed issue nine it's gonna because oh wait they've yeah, given think, it an eight so yeah, far yeah. yeah yeah have they reviewed issue nine because it just looks like oh um, wait they have yeah I yeah i found right. it i found it so what's the verdict got a great 8 out of 10 doomsday clock settles at least one nerdy debate as we see what happens when Dr. Manhattan goes to war against a very angry Justice League that confrontation brings a welcome sense of fun to an otherwise bleak book though the darkness still carries the day this issue is also notable for advancing the Superman theory subplot and establishing it as more than just convenient plot device. How that's bad. They've not even checked that, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Bad, very bad grammar. However, the continued absence of so many Watchmen characters is becoming a problem for the series, mm-hmm. and that, in their eyes, give gets an eight. So eight out of ten, Tom. Eight. That that. To me, if I read that verdict, it was like, well, I wonder what's going. Cool. I'm sure they did this last time as well, where the the verdict was really bad. Mm-hmm. And they give it like a nine out of ten. Uh, I just don't think IGN can give bad reviews, you know. Tom, no. I really don't. I think they get too much money peddling this shit, and they know what will happen. Comic book roundup. It's got a nine point two user rating and a critic rating of eight point six. Eight point 
point six. That ten. Is There's loads mad. of ten scores. Yeah, I'm just looking now. There are loads of tens, and they're pretty much evens out to about the seventh then there's there's only one free um from wow. matthew peterson this issue feels like it should be the yeah. beginning of the end the combination of what the series has been getting at since the beginning but it's still unclear what's going on whether this book is relevant any longer yeah matt you're a spot yeah. on there yeah well, let's read one of the well, let's bounce it out with a really big score perfect 10 comics the gathering i have to say that this is probably one of the best issues so far <laughs> don't know why I'm doing it in that accent. I just want a job at IGN, Tom. That's what I really want. Right. It gives the readers what they wanted in terms of there being a fight between Dr. Manhattan and the DC Universe. But it also propels the many Superman theory fo- story forward as well. Gary Frank's art is phenomenal in his issue, and I do think that it makes it well worth the wait. Yeah, his art's good, in it? Oh, yeah. 10 out of 10 for that. So... We've got some uh, right. co- got some comments as well, do we? We do. Do do I still have to do the voice? <laughs> only only if you want to. Only if you want to. Oh, have Eric to Ferguson. Eric. Goddamn, good intro. Not canon. Laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I remember us saying that. Yeah. Yeah, Eric Punt. Thank you for this review. You are right. Too many characters. It's a mess. One question. You said you switched to Marvel. What is your opinion on Dark Knight's Metal? I see some resemblance with Doomsday Clock. Too many storylines. I actually really like uh, Dark Knight's Metal. And basically in that graphic novel, there's a dark multiverse, it turns out. But in that dark multiverse, uh, all the Batmen of it have went mental. And they've killed all the other heroes. So you've got a Green Lantern Batman. You've got a... Uh, Aquaman, well, well, Aqua Woman, Batman. Mm. You've got like a Superman, Batman, a Cyborg, Batman, uh, and I think it's really, really good. A really creative, um, and they kind of come to the the forefront. You might have seen the Joker. He's called the Batman who laughs, and he's sort of like a, a Joker with like a like night outfit on. Uh, it's, it's difficult. It's basically, it's sort of like loads of leather. Uh, it's metal, Tom. It's metal as fuck. It looks like a Metallica cover, and you'd love that. Okay. And yeah, Scott Snyder's involved in it, right? Yeah. So Google Batman, the man who laughs. Um, the, sorry, the Batman who laughs, uh, and that's sort of the main villain of it, uh, as as well as like the Bat God, Bob Batos, uh, and I really like it. And I did read a lot of the Grant Morrison's stuff that set that up, so I do know kind of the ins and outs of it. But I really like it, but apparently people don't. Okay. Josh Wu Cool. Josh Wu Cool, sorry. Two months ago. I still like this series, but it's quite honestly frustrating. What I would want in a DC slash Watchmen crossover story are the Watchmen characters interacting with Superman slash Batman, some of the Charlton comic characters, and maybe the JSA. Yeah, fair enough. I think that is a big problem of the graphic novel that the characters aren't really interacting with one another. Like team up comics, they often start off the two characters meet each other and they're a bit unsure of each other and they have a fight, and then then they team up to take down the main villain. Whereas this, they've met up, they have a fight, team up to take the main villain, and they split up, and then I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. And Cyan Blue. It has become a horrible story. Can't wait for you to shit on this issue like you did the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, thank you for that sign, Blue. Uh, remember, guys, if you if there's only four reviews coming in on, on every episode, then all the comments get read out. Oh yeah. So make sure you come in again. And uh, yeah, email us as well. We didn't have any emails this week, but next time we'll get into those. Uh, watching the Watchman Pod at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about Doomsday Clock or, you know, anything else really in the comic book. Uh, yeah, I want to really hear someone say why they like it and kind of debate our points. Yeah. Like, do you like that the story doesn't have a main character? Do you like that the story doesn't have a villain? Do you like that it's. Do you like that it ruins the legacy again? of Watchmen? Like. Yeah. yeah. Do you like it? Because there will be. Like, there's people giving it tens oh, everywhere, yeah. Tom, across the board. Uh, and. I really want someone to... We need to find someone 
you know, I'm going to start emailing at people at IGN and being like, do you want to come on the show and defend it? You'd be, that will be great. Uh, yeah, so anyone in the comments, just write what you like about it. Just do a bullet point list. Don't need to write an essay. But I'll ha- I want 5,000 words on my desk by Monday. And, this, and you better fucking subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to Def's channel. Not that he really needs it. Subscribe to my channel. I definitely need it if you like Alpha Metallica. If you like Metallica, sorry, the show's called Alpha Metallica or Battle Rap. Uh, check out all the Def's Explained stuff as well. Yeah, um, don't bother going to the movies anymore, guys. Yeah. The movies are so last year. Just watch the ending explained on YouTube. Uh, and we'll be back um, we'll try to be a bit more timely we've had to delay this episode slightly um, but you know I, I think you guys can forgive us for that because it isn't the most um, and nearly got delayed again it did it did but and it nearly also didn't get recorded it, it, it did it's been through such rigmarole but we did get there in the end and we'll be back towards the end of April to tackle issue 10 I don't really want to say that we do but we do we're almost there so we might as well push yeah. on to the end I mean Def any, any final thoughts anything like that no like it comment it subscribe it (laughs) alright well uh, yeah this has been Tom keep reading graphic novels go back and read Watchmen you know scrub the taste of this from your brain and enjoy some fantastic work (laughs) every month after this episode just go back and read Watchmen yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back and listen to our Watchmen stuff as well. I'm still very, very proud of that. I think we uh, we gave some great analysis there. But um, Def, until next month, man. This has been great. It's a good night from me. It's a good night from Quay. Try.